That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight's story is a comedy with Andy Griffith as your host. Here's a preview. A divorce? Just because I want you to have the best things in life? Look, I, I know you love me, and I love you. Talking about a divorce is no way to prove it. But sometimes people just... I mean, loving each other isn't enough. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. This is Andy Griffith. In a subway car on a bench nearest the exit sits a rather good-looking man named Steve Montgomery. Before him on the floor of the car is a large piece of granite. It's so big, in fact, that Steve has to strap it. Now, across from him, a male passenger gazes from the rock to Steve. He wants to say something. He started several times, but Steve is staring so hard at a car card across from him that the passenger finally twists to see what Steve is looking at. It's a card advertising stamp collecting. The passenger finally finds his voice. You collect stamps? What? I asked if, uh, if you collected stamps. Oh, no, I don't. But I'm thinking about it. Uh-huh. I saw you get on this car. Yeah. I've been visiting the breakwater. <laughs> What's that got to do with it? Do with what? That big rock there. Oh, this. Yeah, that. It's solid granite, you know. It's amazing the stuff they put in breakwaters. Yeah, it's more amazing who visits breakwaters. Huh? What are you going to do with it? I mean, the rock there. What do you think? Mount it in a ring? <laughs> It'd be kind of heavy for that. Maybe I should take it up again. I was a jeweler once. Hmm. So what are you now? I'm going to carve directly into this. It's something I've always wanted to do. Uh-huh. A few chips, maybe. I might mount those. Do you have any idea what a stone like this is worth? Uh, no. And they throw it away. Use it as part of a breakwater. That's a city for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very expensive to buy. That's why I never carved in stone before. Well, what have you carved in? Nothing. Nothing? I have this sudden yen to become a sculptor. It's a good profession, you know. Hey, this is my stop. Uh, good luck, buddy. <laughs> no! Oh, oh, don't they ever clean these trains? Be careful of my rock. Yeah, lady, uh, be very careful of it, because uh, he's going to be a sculptor. And that's only the beginning of our story. Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, A Very Nice Couple, by Ted Sherdeman. Our stars, Alan Young and Janet Waldo. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops. Steve Montgomery in a subway train, bound for home with a large piece of granite he found on a breakwater. His wife, Connie, to whom he's been married for a year and a half, is at home in the small two-room studio apartment where she cooks with canned heat in their closet-sized kitchen and washes dishes in the bathtub. At the moment, she knows nothing about Steve bringing home the rock. She's on the phone with her friend Eileen Flanagan and gazing sourly at a plastic model airplane suspended by a string from the ceiling. You don't understand, Steve Eileen. He has the soul of an artist. He may have the soul for it, but he lacks the talent, Connie. He's a very good photographer. When he works at it, but he doesn't like it much, does he? Like what? Photography. Well... He's a dabbler. You might as well face it, Connie. You married a dabbler. I tried to encourage him to, to follow through on something. Did he ever finish anything? Uh, like his idea of writing songs. It was jingle. Okay, jingle. Advertising jingle. All right, advertising jingles. Did he finish one? Well, yes. He had a real cute one about soap. About what? Soap. He called it Sudsy Wudsy. Oh, my. 
So, so what happened? I, I haven't heard it on the radio. Well, or... you won't either. Steve found out it's a, a closed deal. What do you mean, a closed deal? Well, the people who do such songs have the market all closed up. It's impossible for a newcomer to get in. What do you mean? I just mean the ad agencies go to the same songwriters all the time and, and, and make it impossible for anyone else to get an audition. With a title like Sudsy Wudsy, I don't blame them. What's wrong with it? You're supposed to get suds with soap. What happened to Steve's big plan to print trading stamps? Well, um, the press is still here, uh, and the ink, and the type, and... Uh, do you have any idea of how much stuff is, is, is required before you print anything? Do you, Eileen? And the puppets he was going to market? Well, he finished one puppet. All except the hands and, and feet and costume. Mm. And the model ships. Did Steve ever get that ship in the bottle? Well, uh, the threads are still sticking out of the neck of the bottle. But that's not the reason he gave up the idea. Oh, I'm curious, Connie. What do you live on? You're nosy, too, Eileen. Oh, come on, sweetie. We've been friends for a long time. Tell me, what do you live on? Well, um, Steve gets a check every month. Mm, I know. Seventy-five bucks from a dead uncle's trust. It's better than a poke in the eye with a sharp stick. Not much. And I do all right as a, a mobile stenographer. Uh, listen, Connie, I can get you an introduction to an advertising agency director who'd cast you in one of his commercials right away. You have a fine and versatile voice. Eileen, you've talked about this before. I just can't stand you living the way you do. But the answer is still no, Eileen. But you have the talent for it. A lot more than Steve has. Eileen, oh, I hear him coming up the stairs now. And you can't wait to see what he's brought home this time, right? Uh, call me and let me know. Goodbye, sweetie. Oh, dear. Uh, I, just a minute, dear. I'm coming. myself. Oh. Those stairs are killers. Steve. Will you still love me if I have to wear a crust? Uh, will, 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 will you please answer my question? What question? What's it for? Well, I found it on a break, Walter. I don't I... care where you found it. I want to know what it's for. Connie, do you have any idea what it costs to buy a piece of granite like this? What's it for, Steve? Well, you know how I always wanted to be a sculptor. Uh, uh, th there's a tub of clay in the bedroom that's hardened since you decided to take up pottery. Don't change the subject. Well, I'm asking you one more time, Steve. What is that rock for? I'm going to carve it into something you'll be proud of. Oh, my golly. Of course, I have to get a hammer and some chisels first. Steve, uh, let me understand this. You're, you're going to carve it? When you're asked. You can say you're married to Steve Montgomery, the sculptor, whose latest piece is solid granite called Weeping Mary. That's a good name for it, don't you think? <laughs> well, don't you, Connie? I think Eileen Flanagan is right. I'll go out and buy a stonecutter's hammer and some chisels right away. I'll get started on it today. <laughs> Excuse me, granite. Who else would it be? Where are you? In the bathroom, doing the dishes. Pretty soon now you'll have a real sink to wash them in. Oh, anything would be better than this bathtub. Well, what have you got behind your back? The road to riches, Connie. I'm glad it isn't another rock. I've decided something, Connie. As soon as I get through, I'll help you move Weeping Mary. I've been falling over it all day. Why not you want to see what I've got? Now, you can dry the plates if you want to help me. Look. Ow! It's dead. I don't care whether it's dead. It's a rat. Oh, please. The neighbors will think I'm beating you. Oh, get it out of here. It's just a simple dead rat. Well, what are you doing with it? It's part of my plan. Oh. Just as an experiment, of course. I am going to become a taxidermist. A what? A 
taxidermist. I've given up on the granite. I, I'm going to practice on this little guy. Ooh. As soon as I learn to stuff animals, we'll move to Wyoming or Montana or someplace where there's big game. Oh, throw it away this instant. Oh. Do you have any idea how much a good taxidermist can make? I read all about it in Scientific American. Steve. That's what I meant when I said we're on the road to riches, Connie. Get rid of that thing at once. I've got to practice on something, Connie. I will not have a dead rat in this place. Gee, I thought you'd be pleased. Connie Montgomery reached near the end of her rope when her husband Steve brought home the dead rat and announced he was going to become a taxidermist. The only thing that saved them was Steve's getting an assignment from a magazine to take a few pictures. Now, Carney knew he didn't like photography much, but it was the only talent he had ever demonstrated, and she was content that the magazine assignment would take him a week of his time before he brought home more pieces of granite or dead animals to the apartment already cluttered with things he had never finished. Connie had lunch with her friend Eileen Flanagan and explained. This man, um, I think he said his name was Purdue Hill. Well, anyway, he phoned Steve and asked if he was interested. And he wasn't. Oh, but he was. Mm, that's a switch. I mean, it came, um, Mr. Hill's phone call, right in the middle of the fight we were having about the dead rat. Oh, please, not while I'm eating. You're only having coffee now. <sighs> Connie, what happened to the big rock? Well, uh, you know how Steve is. I know. He gave up the idea of being a sculptor when he found that rat in an alley. How did he get it to your apartment? The rat? The rock. The Can rock. It? Oh, on the subway. It was so heavy. I thought he'd never get it up the stairs. I helped him the last few. Uh, where is it now? In our living room. Oh, Connie. Why did you leave that slob? Don't call Steve a slob. I can phone Byron any time you say. Who's Byron, I mean? Byron Stockwood, the advertising director I told you about. Oh, him. You want me to? I can call him right now. Well, uh, what do I have to do? We just stand before a microphone and read what's written in your marvelous voice. And you get paid for doing it. How much? Well, I don't know, but I do know you can make more than you're making now as a mobile stenographer. Shall I call and arrange an audition for you? Uh, do I get paid for that? Well, of course not. The audition is just to see if they can use you and where. Uh, shall I, Connie? Oh, say yes. Well, okay, Eileen. Oh, finally. Oh, Connie, didn't you know it, Connie? Have you got a dime for the pay phone? I didn't expect it to happen so fast, Steve. I, I just had the audition yesterday. What's the commercial for? Oh, I don't know, but uh, they want me there at 10.30. Oh, I better hurry or I'll be late. I'll go with you. Oh, that's not necessary. I want to, Connie. Well, you have those photographic prints to make yet. I said I'd go with you. Time's a-wasting. Come on. Well, this is the control room, Mr. Montgomery. What happens here, Mr. Stockwood? Well, this is our engineer, and he turns the mics on or off with those sliding gadgets. And this is the tape engineer. Hello. Hello. I give hand cues the actors can see through the glass there, and I talk to them through this microphone here. It seems simple enough. Sit down, Mr. Montgomery. Hmm. Back there. I have to go to work. Everybody ready? Ready as we're going to be. All set. Okay, we'll try it on for size. I'll give you a cue to begin. What's with the hand, Byron? I give the cues with it. Huh. Okay, let's hear it. Have you tried flush? My cat won't use anything else. We don't have a cat. She meows happily when I put it in her litter box. <laughs> And I just purr when I dump it. It's a remarkable, disposable kitty litter. And where do you dispose of flush? Down the toilet. That's disgusting. I won't have my wife in such a commercial. It's just scented sawdust. And... Hold it. Hold it. We're trying to rehearse a commercial, Mr. Montgomery. I can only see two people out there. Pick it up with, uh... Let's see, uh... It's just scented sawdust and so on. On a cue from me. Who gave the meow? The same actor who plays the man. 
Okay, on a cue from me. You mean you're using one actor to play two parts? Yes, Mr. Montgomery. Now, if you'll please be seated. Just a minute. You're contributing to the unemployment situation. By doubling an actor? Whatever you call it. You are, you know. But even the Actors' Union allows it in radio. I don't care what they allow. What are you, a troublemaker? I'm against him meowing. You're against everything. Will you please let us go on with our work here? I'll bet you're one of the ones who turned down my soap jingle. You and your attitudes are the reason Sudsy Wudsy never got on the air. Pass me the phone, Hal. I better call a studio cop to throw this guy out. What's going on in here? Connie, you're not doing this commercial. Come on, let's go. Well, just a minute. Uh... Byron, what's the matter? Your husband objects Connie, to... Connie, are you coming or not? No, I'm not. Go on, Byron. He objects to the commercial, to the doubling of the meow, and... Are you getting out, or do I have to have you thrown out? I'll leave under my own power, Mr. Stockwood. I never thought you'd stoop so low. What have I done? A toilet flush on the air. It's just a sound. They use it on all in the family all the time. You don't have to apologize for anything, Connie. All in the family doesn't double actors just because they need a cat. What's that have to do with it? This is for radio. I don't care what it's for. I'll call the studio police. Never mind. I'm leaving. Oh. This is so humiliating. There, there. It's not your fault, Connie. Okay, guys, we'll tape it after lunch. There, there, sweet girl. o'clock at night? Oh, Byron took me to dinner after we were through. You had to eat with him as well as work with him? Listen, that display of yours... I'm not through, you know, Connie. I'm seeing every newspaper editor I can tomorrow. I thought you were honest. I am? And what are you talking about? We don't even have a cat. <laughs> Steve began to resent Connie's carving out a new career in broadcasting, and the casting calls from Byron Stockwood's office came often. So often, in fact, that Connie began earning enough money not only to get him out of debt, but to enable him to start a savings account. But what Steve resented most were the frequent dinner dates Connie had with Byron. And what Connie resented most was Steve's constant dabbling. For instance, she returned from a taping session to find him bent over a small wooden block. Oh, oh. excuse me, Rock. Steve? Well, didn't you even hear me come in? I was concentrating. What are you doing now? I mean, what is that? This is going to be a wood engraving. Wood engraving? That's different from a wood cut. A wood cut is on a plank of the wood. A wood engraving is done on the grain of the wood. This is a genuine boxwood. Feel it. Feels slick. It is. I've stabbed my thumb three times. This is called a graver. That's what I stab myself with. And the sand fill leather pad the block rests on is what all wood engravers use. Um, what are these called? Well, various sizes of gravers. Two sizes of, uh, lining tools, I think the clerk called them. See, each one has sort of a ribbed cutting surface. And why are you home so late? It's only a little past nine. That's not late. Have you had dinner? Uh-huh. What happened? That uh, Byron Stockwood again? Oh, he invited me, mm. so I went. What happened to the vinyl repair kit you were so enthused about? The one that was going to make us a fortune? I didn't think the husband of a big radio star should go around fixing chairs in beauty shops. I'm not a big radio star. Or haunting used car dealers in hopes a torn vinyl roof would show up on some crock of a car. So where's the kit? In the corner there. You're impossible. Why? Just because I'm trying to make some money to support us? Oh, you're... You're a dabbler. Just because I can't afford to take you out to dinner every night like Byron Stockwood? It isn't every night. The last week, and I've counted them, it's been four nights out of the seven. Where are you going? To bed. Before I say something I may regret. Say it. Say it. Put a bandage on your thumb. I don't want you to bleed all over the pillow. <laughs> Connie. 
No, Byron. You sure? Well, maybe. Just a little. Say when. <laughs> when. <laughs> now, what do we drink to? Oh, whatever you want, Byron. To you, with whom I think I've fallen in love. <laughs> Stop it, Byron. It's a fact, you know. Oh, that's just the wine talking. <laughs> oh, no, it isn't. I find myself spending my days and nights thinking about you. Only you, Connie. <laughs> Let's change the subject. Oh, I can do that. But it isn't going to alter anything. Who, uh, who did you think about before I came into your life? My work. Only my work. Don't you ever get tired doing the same thing over and over and over? Sure, sure. But it's my work. My job. Hmm. That's something. What is? Oh. How you, how you think of your work? I know a man who changes his work like he changes his socks. The man you're married to? I don't want to talk about him. Eileen Flanagan told me all about Steve. He... He... I said I didn't want to talk about Steve. Okay. What do you want to talk about? Anything. But him. You're not happy with him, Connie. And you could be with me. What makes you so sure? Because I give you the things you deserve. And you deserve a lot, Connie. I, I better go. Thanks for a, a nice dinner, Byron. Uh, let me just pay the check. My car's outside. No, uh, I'd better take the subway home. Uh, see you tomorrow at the taping. You, Connie? Yes, it's me. When are you going to move that piece of granite? Tomorrow. I'll move it tomorrow. Oh, always tomorrow. I'm already in bed. You don't expect me to get up and go out there in my pajamas, do you? Well, I don't know what to expect from you. I've been thinking ever since I looked in the bank book. Wood engraving is too slow. What has that got to do with the bank book? We can afford one. Afford one what? An etching press. Steve. Do you realize how much there is to be made doing etchings? I can see it now. Street scenes of the village. Don't go buying an etching press. It's a lot faster than wood engraving. I don't care how fast it is. And I wouldn't stab myself in the thumb all the time. I said no. I, I, I've had it with your wild scheme. All I'm trying to do is find a way to make some money for us so you can quit working at this radio station business. I'll never quit. Why? Because you'll have to forego your nice little lunches and dinners with Byron Stockwood, is that it? At least he sticks to his job. That measly little job. He's a vice president of a big advertising agency. Just because I'm trying to make a good living for us. Wh where are you going? I'm sleeping in the other room. Good night, you... You devil. <laughs> Oh, my precious. She's not here. Oh, that's right. She slept on the couch in the other room last night. Your boy's getting up, Connie. Want some coffee? She... Where is she? Connie? Connie, are you in the... No, she's not in there. What's this? First time she's ever left me a note. Let's see... Steve. She didn't say dear Steve or dearest Steve or nothing. Just, just Steve. Mm -hmm. Have gone to early taping, use the bank book, and buy the etching press. Connie. No love? No nothing. Just Connie. Etching press? Now, why would I want an etching press? lunching with Byron today, Connie. I told you, I mean, because you asked me first. Good answer. He's crazy about you, you know. Hmm? Who? Byron Stockwood. Who else are we talking about? 
Oh, we're certainly not talking about Steve. Are we? Mm, no. Keeps you busy, doesn't he? Who? Oh, Byron. He casts me in lots of part. I don't know anybody who swept him off his feet like you have. <laughs> He'd marry you in a moment if you were free. Well, I'm not. Why aren't you, Connie? Look, Eileen. I'm just another radio actress who's done well for herself. Oh, mm, well, okay. And thanks to you, I I just happened to get my start with Byron Stockley. Oh, mm, what a start. I appreciate what you did for me, Eileen. Byron's one of the most eligible bachelors in this town, you know. I'm not looking for an eligible bachelor or ineligible one, for that matter. Into his apartment yet? No. He's a penthouse, you know. Eileen... Can we drop the subject? Well, I was only saying. I know what you were saying. Waiter, the checks, please. Oh. oh, excuse me, Rock. Where is it, Steve? Oh, hi, Connie. Where's the etching press? Whatever gave you the idea I wanted an etching press? You did. Me? We, we, when you gave up wood engraving, you said etchings were faster. Oh, I was just making conversation, I guess. What are you doing? You see this? It's a mold. A mold for what? A toy soldier. When I finish pouring this alloy into it and let it set and paint it, it'll be a replica of one of Napoleon's soldiers. A toy soldier? Connie, I passed this store that was literally filled with toy soldiers. Kneeling and, and shooting rifles, some on horseback, ooh, cavalrymen, cannoneers, you name it, they had it. Do you know what one Napoleonic soldier sells for in that store? Fifteen bucks! You are going into the toy soldier business? Sure, there's a fortune in it. People from all over the world collect toy soldiers. I bought only a dozen molds to start with. This is one lying prone. A uh, Civil War soldier, I think. As soon as the alloy in this little ladle melts, I'm going to pour. <laughs> Connie, where are you going? To get my suitcase. Where are you going? I don't know yet. Well, did Byron Stockwood cast you in a part that takes you away from here? No. I'm leaving you. But why? I've just had it, that's all. I came home all time to congratulate you on, on getting an etching press, and you didn't even know what I was talking about. Can't you take a little joke? I'm fed up with your jokes. You're, you're dabbling. A guy tries to make a little money, and you call it dabbling. What do you call flitting from one thing to the other? I don't flip. You don't do the thing you're equipped to do. Like what? Like photography. Oh, that. Yes, that. Well, you're no Leonardo da Vinci at it, but... Who? Leonardo... Oh, skip it. I'll send for the rest of my things when I know where I'll be. Look, I'll, I'll give up the toy soldiers if that's what's bugging you. I just thought it would be a profitable business to get into. If it isn't that, it'll be something else. No, Steve. I am leaving. I, I think a divorce is the only solution. A divorce? Just because I want you to have the best things in life? Look, I, I know you love me and... I love you. Talking about a divorce is no way to prove it. But sometimes people just... I mean, loving each other isn't enough. I mean... Oh, I don't know what I mean. Goodbye, Steve. Andy Griffith again, and here's the concluding act of A Very Nice Couple. You don't know how happy your news makes me, Connie. Wait, it's not easy to walk out on a man. But you did, and that's what's important. I, I, I just couldn't take Steve dabbling any longer. Did I tell you about him making toy soldiers? Yes, you did. Now I can get you on a plane to Reno tomorrow. And he said, Reno? Nevada? Well, you want a quick divorce so we can be married right away, don't you? Well, uh... uh I guess so, Byron. Uh, where are you staying, Connie, dear? At a hotel for women. Silly girl. You can stay at my penthouse. No. Just until your plane leaves tomorrow. No, uh, 
I'll stay at the hotel. But the place will be yours after we're married anyway. Well, I said no, Byron. What are you doing? Give us a kiss, sweet girl. No. I said kiss me. I don't feel like it. Do you have a headache? No, I don't. Well, you kissed the man you just left, didn't you? That was different. He was my husband. Steve was a dabbler. You said so yourself. Well... Your best friend, Eileen Flanagan, said you were always complaining about your ex-husband going from this to that. He, he, he was trying to find himself. Are you making excuses for that bum? No, I'm not making... And don't call Steve a bum. What else is he if not that? Well, look... It's one thing for me to downgrade him, but... I love the lines in your forehead when you get angry. But look, you're a very attractive man, but I won't have you saying nasty things about Steve. Well, what am I supposed to do? Invite him to the be best man at our wedding? You could do worse. I can't imagine how. Maybe he'd show up with his tin soldiers or wood engravings or something just as ridiculous. Like that big rock. You slapped me! Go right ahead, young lady. <laughs> Thank you. Steve! Steve! Oh! Excuse me, Rock. Steve? Steve? Where are you? Yes, I'm coming. Oh. It's you again. Yes? Uh, uh, my card. I'm Purdue Hill of the Hill Magazines. I'm looking for Mr. Steve Montgomery. Oh, oh well, so am I, but I guess he isn't home. I wanted to offer him a job. Oh, oh, uh, come in, Mr. Hill. I'm Mrs. Montgomery. Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, oh, oh I should have told you about that piece of granite. Uh, are you all right, Mr. Hill? Oh. I guess so. Oh, here. Let me help oh. you out. Uh, uh, oh. you, you sure you're all right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, fine, 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 fine. We're so used to it now that... Well, we call it Weeping Mary oh. because we fall over it once in a while, too. This is a very unusual piece. A granite, isn't it? Uh, my husband decided he was going to sculpt it, but... Your uh, husband, Steve Montgomery? Yes, sir. And I thought he was just a photographer. Oh, he is. A good one. I know, I know, I know. That's why I came by. Uh, very unusual. Oh, well, you, you you said something about it, a job, Mr. Hill? Yeah, oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, to, to make photos for our various magazines. A staff job. Oh. Mm. I don't suppose he'd be interested, but um, it, it, it's an opportunity for, uh, the, for him to expose himself. Yes. Yeah, very unusual. Is it for sale? What? Uh, the granite sculpture. Oh, that thing. Oh, I've been after him to get rid of that rock for a long time. That's a most unusual piece of surrealistic sculpture, Mrs. Montgomery. Uh, I'd like to have it, uh, if it's for sale. Well, how how much are you offering? Uh, say, uh, uh, three thousand. Uh, four? Five? Thousand? Five thousand. Uh, I'll leave a check for it. As soon as it's clear, I'll have the sculpture picked up, okay? Oh, I mean, you... You, 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 mean, you, you mean you'd actually pay, pay, pay money for I that I know thing? the exact spot on my estate where it would show the greatest advantage. Is it a deal, Mrs. Montgomery? Well... Uh, and your husband could visit it any time he pleased. Well... Uh, here, I, I'll make out the check right now. Oh. Uh, you can show it to your husband. Hey, if it's not satisfactory... Oh, it is. It is. I, I was just thinking about the job you offered. Though it only pays 500 a week. Uh, oh. But he could sculpt on the side. And as I said, it, it would be a fine exposure for him. Uh, I ought to introduce myself. I'm Onion Tatum. Glad to meet you. I'm Steve Montgomery. Mm. You want the onions from my martini? Uh, no, thanks. I cannot stand them. You thought you might like it. That's called a Gibson. What is? But you're drinking. Mm -hmm. A martini has olives in it. Oh. They taste the same, 
But a martini has olives. I love olives. Bartender, bring two martinis. I am buying. But I'm drinking beer. Oh. And a beer for my friend. I can't stand martinis. Oh. There's no reason for you to look so... I'm so sad about it. I'm not sad about you not liking martinis. Well, well, then what are you sad about? Do you mind if I call you Steve? No, it's my name, Steve. Montgomery, Steve. And you could call me Onion. Okay, Onion. <laughs> you can have all of us from the martinis. Steve, why are you so sad? My wife left me. <laughs> There's nothing to be sad about. I mean, uh... I wish mine would leave me. <laughs> she just up and walked out. There's plenty of other fish in the sea. Not like Connie. Who, 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 who's that, your dog? My wife, the one who walked out on oh, me. Oh, yeah. Just because I was trying to make a good living for us. It was terrible. A man tries first one thing, then another. She didn't understand it. She got teed off because I didn't buy an etching press. A <laughs> what? And she's always after me to move that piece of granite away from the door. Well, your wife is a... What did you say her name was? Connie. You're better off without her. You're better off without Connie. No, I'm not. You mark my words, Steve. You'll be better off without her. And I say I won't be. And I say I will be. You want to step outside, Onion? Listen, if I'm going to fight, I will make... Miss me, are you? Step outside and try. I'd rather wait in here for the olives. Okay, then in here. <clears throat> now, get up and face the music, Onion. <laughs> You're still alive with her, ain't you? Yes, I am. You gonna get up and take your lumps? If I do, can I still have olives from the machine? <laughs> of our building, oh, Steve. Connie. Oh, Steve. You've been drinking. Uh, uh, Connie. Connie, you're back. And with the most wonderful news. Oh, nothing could top the fact that you're back. Oh, Connie, Connie, darling. I thought I'd lost you. Oh, I came back earlier. Then Mr. Hill arrived, and I've been looking for you ever since. Oh, Connie. Who's Mr. Hill? He's made an offer of $5,000 for that piece of granite you never touched. The check's upstairs, and that's not all. He wants to hire you as a photographer for 500 a week. $5,000 for the rock? He's going to put it on his estate. He said it was a most unusual piece of surrealistic sculpture. What's that got to do with the photography? Oh, well, that's why he came to the flat, to hire you. Then he saw the rock, and... Oh, isn't it wonderful, darling? Oh, it's wonderful you came back, Connie. Oh, I'm so glad to be married to you. Me too. Come upstairs and I'll prove it. You, uh, gonna show me your etchings? You've already seen my etchings. I know, but I'm an art lover. <laughs> <laughs> Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. A Very Nice Couple was written by Ted Sherdeman, produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your host was Andy Griffith. Our stars were Alan Young and Janet Waldo. Featured in the cast were Byron Kane, Gene Gillespie, Shepard Menken, Dawes Butler, and Vance Colby. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliott Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI.